This video is going to have a look at creating a query in Access. We're going to be working through the Access Queries task sheet, which makes use of our friends and colleagues database. So for this first query, we're going to ask our database who all of our friends are, who are 28 or older. We're only going to display the first name, last name, town and car columns just close that and then we're going to save the query with a specified name so if I open access here I have my work colleagues table if I double click on this it will open the table and if you made needed to make amendments then we could do so here we don't have to have the table open when we're creating a query but it can be used to check that your results are correct. To create a query, which is just a question we're asking the table, click on create and then we've got query design. Please remember that this video is used creating is created using Access 2010 and in 2007 the ribbon for create is laid out a little differently. But we are just going to use the create query button to create a new blank query in design view. If I click on the button that takes us into the query 1 design window and I have the show table dialog box. If we had multiple tables then these would all be displayed here and we could select which table we're going to be querying. If we had queries already created then these would be in here and we could ask a question of a table and a query and both displays queries and tables that are already created. To add a table all we have to do is click on the add button and that will add the table into the query area. Whilst the show table dialog box is open we can't do anything else so we can either click on the red cross or click the close button to get rid of this. What we have to do now is populate the design area of the query. The first row contains fields and these relate back to the field headings that we have in the table. So in this instance we have title, first name, last name, town, date of birth, age and car. Do be aware that we have got these drop down arrows when a uh, cell is selected. If I switch between columns in the field row you can see that that drop down arrow moves with me. Here is one way that we can add fields. If you know which fields you're looking for and in this instance we want first name, last name, town and car then you can select to only add those columns. In this instance we're going to add the fields in a different way. If we go up to the work colleagues table double click inside the name box for this table and that highlights everything within this list. I then position the mouse cursor anywhere in that shaded table. Press and hold the left mouse button and I can drag all of the field headings down into the design view. You want to make sure that you always enter all of these headings into the first column and then it populates the whole of the area. Do be aware, depending on the size of your monitor resolution, you might find that your columns go over the edge of the design area, but we have the left and right um, arrows to scroll to scroll left and right through that table. So I've added my field headings. The second row is table and that tells us which table we're going to be taking the information from. Remember if we had multiple tables then we could have different tables and different fields from those tables in this area. So it tells us where we're working from. The sort row tells us if we are going to sort the information. 
for example, if I wanted to sort my table by last name in alphabetical order descending, all I'd have to do is click inside that area and again a drop down arrow appears and I can choose ascending, descending or not sorted. If I wanted it in descending order I'd just click descending and then my table or my resultant query would be sorted in descending alphabetical order of last name. I'll just remove that because it's not asked for in this first table. The show column show um, decides whether or not a field column will be displayed. If the box is ticked then it will be displayed. If it's unticked then it won't be displayed. If I go back to the question paper we only want first name, last name, town and car. So in Access I can uncheck everything except first name, last name, town and car. This means that when I run the query only those four columns will be displayed. The four columns that have a tick in the show area. The last column that we deal with, or the last row rather, that we deal with is criteria and this is where we're actually asking the question. Criteria can be a single instance or a single use of a word. For example if I only wanted to know the names of people that lived in London I could go into the criteria row for the London column and type LON. The reason I've typed LON is because in my table we've only used the three letters LON as a code for our table. <coughs> if I wanted to know only male friends or colleagues I could go into the title criteria and type in Mr. And again that would only display people who have Mr. in the title column. So a single instance or a single use of a word can be a criteria. If I get rid of this one. In this instance we're asking asked for uh, friends with an age of 28 or greater. We'll come on to the, the or greater in a moment but for now all I'd have to do is type in 28 and then it will only display people who are 28. To see this in action if I click on the run button and that will run the query so run performs the action specified in a query and I can see that I only have one friend who is 28. If I go back to my work colleagues table and look at the ages I can see that it is only Tom that's 28. If we see that our query hasn't given us exactly the results we're expecting and again in the case of uh, question 1 it's 28 or greater and we've seen that problem from the table itself we can change the view if we click on the view icon in the home ta uh, home ribbon that will take us back into design view and this is where we make use of our comparison operators in this instance I want to know people who are 28 or greater so it's more than 28 a less than symbol is the little arrow pointing left a more than is the arrow pointing right. If I just zoom in on there we can see those little icons more clearly hopefully. If we wanted 28 or greater we'd also need an equals symbol. So at the moment my query runs smaller than, greater than or equal to 28. If I zoom out again if I run this query it might be that everyone selected or it might um, come back with an error message. I get the feeling it's going to come back with an error message. Yeah. 
So the expression you entered contains invalid syntax. It's because I've put greater than and less than. So if I say greater than, so it's the right pointing arrow, my query now reads greater than or equal to 28. And if I run that criterion, I find everyone who is 28 or older. So if I check back at work colleagues, if I check the age for Adam Smith, Adam Smith is 30, so he is older than 28. Uh, John O'Malley is 31, so again he's older than 28. And I've also still got Tom in my query, so I know that it's included people who are 28 and also people who are older than 28. And this is where we can check back using the table to make sure our query results are correct. To save a query, and again this differs slightly between 2010 and 2007, if I click on File, and here I have Save or Save Object As. If we imagine that Save Object As is the same as the Office button Save As option in Access 2007, I get the Save As dialog box pop up. We want to make sure that we keep it saved as a query. We can change this with the drop down list, but we want it to make sure it's a query. And here I'm calling it 28A B F R I E N D, and then your name. Do always pay close attention to the capitalization of letters. As we saw with Excel and file names in Word, we do have to follow exactly the capitalization that's used in a question. And so I'm happy with that if I press OK. And then I can get back to my table by clicking Home. And again, this is a quirk of 2010. There is my table, and there is my query. To print it, all I'd have to do is select File or Office button and Print. I've not told to, I've not been told to print it in Landscape, but if I go for the Print option, that gives up the Print option itself, and we can go for Setup to make sure that it does all fit nicely. One of the things it's always a good idea to do within Access is to check your print preview. So again if I say print and I've got print preview and we can check whether or not it all fits into one page. If I position the mouse over the top of the page itself I've got a magnifying glass with a plus icon in the center. Left clicking allows me to zoom in and be aware that a header and footer will always be applied by default to your page and this is how we can identify whose work is whose so remember you always have to get that name correct I can see that everything will print nicely so I could just send it to print if we have a quick look at creating a second query and again we're going to be using the access queries task sheet in this one number two create a query using your friend database um, select all friends with a car all I have to do is in access if I close this query again I've got my work colleagues table let's create query design add the table add all of the fields to the table and in this instance I want car do be aware, as we've seen previously, the car column is a yes-no column, so if I wanted to know who has a car, I have to type in yes, because it's yes, they have a car. I want only the first name, date of birth, age and car to be displayed, so first name, date of birth, age and car. I then run the query once I've run, once I've made sure it's correct. 
Now I've only got ticks, and again we can go back to our table and check that only the people with ticks have been added in, and then it's saving that query. And this one is fcar. And there's my query. If we do it one more, and this time we're going with the third one. So again, using that same database, select all friends who live in London and are older than 27, or, and are 27 or older. In this instance, we are using two criterion. If I go back into Access, and it's Create, Query, I add the table, add the fields from the table, and then we want everyone who lives in London, so this is where I have to type L-O-N into the town column, and then I want everyone who is 27 or older. So it's greater than or equal to 27. We also want to sort this in ascending order of first names. So I click into the sort row for first name, click on the drop down arrow and select ascending, and then we're only displaying first name, last name, and car. Oh, and it says, and those with a car. So again, I have to type yes <coughs> into the car column. And this is where it's important to read the questions carefully. Be aware that town and age are not being displayed, but they are having criteria worked on them, and it will occur, it will work properly. And again, we can just check to make sure it's perfect by saying run, and there's our answers. So we want to know people who are older than 27, live in London, and have a car. And again, you can just go back to your table and make sure that that's the case. So I should have Tom Seely in it, because he's 28, lives in London, and has a car. And there he is. I should have... not 28. 21 lives in London, John O'Malley. And there he is. And that's 30. And James Pooley. Yep, there he is. And who else has got a car? Norman lives in Leeds, and Alice lives in Edinburgh. So I know that's only that's the only three answers I should have. So we can always check that the query has run correctly. If I file and save object as, and in this instance it's O L R O L D R L O N. And that's it. Again, we'd have to print it and hand in the results. One final thing to be aware of. In our navigation pane, I have tables. I now have queries as a subheading as well. Do be aware, if the navigation pane is not set to all access objects, if I have it set only to tables, then I can only see my tables. And it might be that I assume everything else is missing. So if we can't see something, but we know we've created it, make sure that that list there, that word, or the name bar, rather, reads all access objects, and it will all be there for us.